In this screencast, I'm going to show you some examples of the if-then-else construct. The if-then-else construct is an example of conditional logic. In my opinion, the if-then-else construct is pretty self-explanatory in PowerShell. Let's go over a uh, simple one, starting with the symbol if-then, and then we'll go from there. So you can see here in my sample script, I have x is equal to the integer 1. The next line down here I have f in parentheses x equals 1 right host x is equal to 1. So what this is doing is when an if construct you always have the word if and then you have a set of parens here and this is the condition that it's testing. So what this is doing this is setting setting any kind of condition. This could be the condition of if x is equal to 1, if x is null, if x is 0, this could even be something like if random string is equal to 2. I mean this could really be any kind of condition right here. For this example I'm testing to see if it ac x is actually 1. As you can see here when I ran this it ran and it said x is equal to 1. So but what would happen if we would set x equal to 10 for example? So let's run this snippet again. And you can see nothing. Because x is equal to 10 it didn't write anything. So it only runs this snippet right here if x is actually equal to 1, if this condition is true. And we'll run this again here. This one is if x is not equal to 1 then write host this. And you can see since x is equal to 10, which means x is not equal to 1, it showed our output here. Now here's a more advanced one. This is the if-then-else. And we'll run the if-then-else construct. The difference between the if-then and the if-then-else construct is the if-then, you can see, only tested one single condition. The if-then-else has a catch-all. What I mean by a catch-all is it tested one condition here if x is equal to 2. Else, then do this. The other one didn't have this else construct in here at all. It simply said if the condition was true, then do this. Else, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything at all. It's just going to continue down the script. This actually created a catch-all. If the condition wasn't true, but if anything else was true, if it was false, actually, if it was false, then whatever. It just did this line right here. This, instead of write host, this could be any kind of code snippet at all. So that is the uh, else, which is good for the, the catch-all. Our next one is the if then else if else. This is very similar to the other ones. It's just tagging on more if constructs to the end. I just wanted to show you how you can do the condition else if else if else. So what this does is saying if x is equal to 2, do this. Else, if x is equal to 3, do this. Do this. It's the exact same thing, and you have your catch-all down here. If x does not meet any of these conditions up here, then just say x is equal to something other than 2, 3, or 4, which is correct. It's just tagging on the else ifs. You can actually do as many of these as you want. And finally, I wanted to give you a shortcut here on the one that I used all the time. This is simply saying a way to make a shortcut to actually not doing the EQs or any's, not even using any operators whatsoever. So for example, let's say I have a variable y and I made it equal to dollar $null. Now I wouldn't have to do dollar $null here because by default y is null if it's not declared. So, But for now I just did that for example purposes. What it's saying here is if y then do this, else this. So it's your typical if then else construct. However, you don't see any kind of operators here in the condition. All you see is y. You don't see y equals 1, y not equal to 2, anything like that. It's just y. Now when you see that in PowerShell, what that means is I'm just setting a condition. I'm testing a condition for anything that's not equal to boolean false or null. So that means if y is equal to 2, if y is equal to Bob, if y is equal to an array of 50 characters, anything, anything other than null or a boolean false will match this condition. So you see what I did was 
if y was null, this wouldn't match here because this is matching if it's true. It'll match here. And you can see that's what it did. y has a null or Boolean false value. Let's try y is equal to the string something. And you'll see y is equal to something other than null or Boolean false. Now just to prove my point, let me put it to an array, for example. They're just your typical array with three elements in it. Run it again. Y is equal to something other than null or Boolean false. It really doesn't care what's in here. What it's doing is just testing if it's if this is anything other than null or Boolean false. That's a little shortcut I learned, so let's uh, keep going on with the section and see what else we can get into.